This episode of Tech Tip is brought to you by SANS.org, the most trusted source for computer security training. Use code SECUREBIT underscore TECH05 at checkout to get 5% off any course in any format. Hey everybody, this is Ian Orris with Tech Defense, and today uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the new release of Automator and how you can customize it to fit the needs of your organization. So, as uh, most of you guys know, this week we went ahead and released a new version of Automator, and uh, really big thanks to uh, James Huber here, as you can see the Twitter account for. You should probably go give him a follow. Big thanks to him for taking this code and, and making it uh, much more extensible and uh, turning it into a framework that other people can leverage. So, uh, you know what's new about the new Automator? Uh, obviously, we pull in some new data. Uh, and display it in different ways, but the real power is how easy it is for uh, you as a user to add more sources to this. Uh, at one of the most common feature requests I would get um, for Automator is, hey, I'd really like to see this type of data. Can you pull that data in in some way? Some way? So this really allows you to be able to pull that data in uh, and, and really all it requires is just a, a little bit of editing some XML and some regex, uh, regular expression knowledge. So let's go ahead and get into it. So you notice when you download Automator, um, it also includes uh, a few utility files, um, and one of those is sites.xml. What the sites.xml file does is this is where we list all these sources and the types of data that we want to pull from each of these sources. Um, so this is where you will go to modify what you want to see Automator um, present to you. So in order to do this, I figured it would probably be best to just show you. So uh, one of the requests I get quite, or, or I've gotten quite uh, recently is, hey, we'd like to see some who is information in, uh, in Automator. So what I did is I went and looked for a few different sites that would fit the need. Uh, and really I was looking for something that presents who is data, as you see here, but also lets me send it a URL with our target IP, or if we're going to do this by domain, target domain, because um, that allows me to pass the information that you are, are providing within Automator. So just for those who don't remember, um, here is Automator, and you can give it something like an IP, or a host name or an MD5 and it will check those types of things uh, that we were just talking about. So we'll let this one run real quick. Great. So now we see, all right, it checked these sites. It came back with, hey, these are a bunch of A records. This is the URL category. It is in the Alien Vault Reputation Database. And here's some passive DNS information on it and some uh, malicious URLs associated with it based on virus total data, your ISP, and your country. So, but now what we're trying to do is add who is information to this. So now we know that we want to pull in this guy, all we need to do is go to the site set XML, and you can place this anywhere, but basically what you want to do is from the beginning portion of a site to the end portion of a site, let's copy that, and paste that. So we can put this at the top, bottom, or the top, and all the reason we're doing this is just to give you a template to work with. From. So here, the site name, this could be whatever you want it to be. Um, it, it just needs to be a string. In our case, we'll just call it uh, NS for network solutions underscore who is. And what this allows us to do is when we want to specify a particular source to run this against. So say here, we only want to run 11.11.11.11 against IP void. Well, it's pulling. Uh, how we determine IP void is based on that friendly name or that uh, site name that we put here. 
Now entry here, we're saying, hey, we want to run this site or we want to run this tool for every IP that we're given. This could be uh, a host name or MD5 instead. And additionally, if say this did apply to others, we could just go ahead and add host name here as well. All right. So now this would apply to IPs or host names. But in our scenario, we just want to look at IPs. Our site domain, so our domain URL, this doesn't really uh, have much precedence right now, but this will be used later on. So just fill it in with the URL from the site that you're pulling from. So in this case, networksolutions.com. So when we do our report string for results, so this is saying, hey, what do I want this to proceed before whatever we're giving with our regex or whatever we're gathering with our regex? So back to here, what we're deciding is what is put here with this entry or here, a records from objects.com, right? So in our case, let's look at the site real quick. We're gonna pull in stuff like the net name and we're going to pull it from net name on so all we really want because this already has a colon and it's already kind of formatted pretty nicely all we want to do is call out that we're looking for who is data so that's what i'm going to put in here so i'm just going to do that plus sign just for uh, conformity who is and then we'll let the um we'll let the rest of it take care of itself this friendly name is when you export to a CSV or an HTML doc, there will be a, a column for friendly name, and that's what's going, going to populate here. So in this case, we can just say who is, and that's our friendly name there. So here's where we get to the tricky part, the regex, the regular expression. We don't know uh, regular expressions or, or very well, by all means, feel free to watch some of the various tutorials that I've done in the past on that, and I'll be sure to include links. But this is really easy regex. So let's go look at what we want. So I want, let's say, let's just start with the net name. So I want net name, colon, any number of spaces, plus whatever characters are gathered after that. And then I want it to stop at the end of that line. So let's write a quick little regex that'll do that. And this regex that I'm about to do could be tighter, um, but it, it works for what we're trying to do. So here I've gone ahead and just said net name, and I'm giving it a, an escaped there, and I'm just going to say any number of spaci spaces by doing a slash s plus. And then I'm just going to say uh, any characters after that. And uh, dot plus will match any characters, but it doesn't match a new line. So that should take us to the end of line and we'll be done with it. Okay, uh, our full URL is obviously uh, not raw text, but what you will see here is that we're able to pass the target variable into here. So whatever you put in here as your first argument there, uh, our first parameter, that is your target. So whether this is a hash, an IP, or a host name, it's always considered percent target percent. Right. So let's go ahead and see how our URL is laid out. So as you can see here, it's networksolutions.com slash who is results.jsp question mark IP equals and then the target IP. So that's the structure and that's what we'll match. In here so let's go ahead and do that and of course we'll do HTTP and we'll make it such all right so what we have here is the next property or, or next thing we have to notate is whether this is a results or something else so in most cases 
you're, you're safe just to use results here. And what that's going to do is it's going to reply back uh, with whatever this regex matches. matches. Now there are some cases like, uh, for instance, the alien vault one. So let's go down to alien vault real quick. So in alien vault, we actually uh, don't want to we don't want to display anything that we've captured with the regex. With the regex here, we're just seeing if there's any data to be had. And uh, now we see, yes, okay, great. There is data uh, on that page. We want to display the full URL so then the user can go and grab that. So we're, we're notating the full URL. There are other parameters you could pass as well, but in most cases, we'll go back up to the top, results is going to be what you want to put in there. Now we have some other properties here. Uh, params and headers. These are for sites that may require a HTTP post to get to the data that you want. You'd have to put the parameters and any header stuff in here. A good example of that is our IP void stuff. So let's go and look at IP void real quick. And where am I? Perfect. All right. So in order for it to accept the form for the HTTP post, we have to give it an IP with the target and uh, we have to tell it, hey, go ahead and do this scan now. So that's how you can go ahead and add that kind of stuff in if you need it. In our case, we don't. Uh, yeah, so in our case, we don't need to do it. So this still needs to be here, but we can leave it empty. Same thing with headers. Uh, additionally, for situations where you're using an API to connect to something, you can place the API key here and uh, for virus total stuff, I use my own public API key, which I, I've given out with the code. So uh, that's notated there. Um, of course, you can replace it with your own, but for other sites that may require an API key, you can place that in there and it'll pass that API key. Sometimes you'll have to pass the API key in a parameter as well. So keep that in mind. And to display that, let's go look at virus total real quick. So here's one where we pass it with a parameter and we also have it down here. Great. All right, so let's go back up to our NS who is, and that is it. I mean, that, that is all the parameters. So as you can see, we pretty quickly uh, were able to get to the data we want. So let's go ahead and save this and let's run an IP again and see if we get anything different. So to show you that source, we should now be able to do ns underscore who is to get to our data. And you can see it's checking and no result found in who is. So that means I probably did something wrong with that regex. So let's go ahead and pause real quick and I'll check it out and we'll get started right after. All right, and we're back. So it uh, turns out that it actually ended up being the site was down, not anything wrong with the regex, but the site is back up and you can see I actually ended up adding some more entries as well. Um, so now when we do 11.11.11.11 with a text source of NS who is, we get the full who is uh, data for everything that we added. So to show you what that looks like, you can see, hey, each time I just wanted to say who is because I'm already getting net name, net handle, colon, net board name, all, all that formatting here. So I don't really care about adding it up here like I do with Rob Tex, where I want to say, hey, a records from robtex.com or whatever it happens to be. So for each, uh, each different regex and each thing I want to search for is just another entry for your uh, report string, for your parameter name, for your regex, and for the results type. So pretty simple. Uh, hopefully that makes it pretty apparent to you that you can kind of use this to do anything, not even uh, necessarily security related, it's just some site that you want to look at and pull something from. You can use this framework to do it. You just you know, get a different um, site to look at versus what we have already within, uh, within Automator. So if you have any questions, uh, hit myself or Jim up and we'd be happy to get back with you. Of course, if you have any feature requests uh, or bug reports, let us know. 
And last but not least, uh, look forward to some more videos coming up soon where we go into further details on stuff like this within Automator and some of the other tools that we're working on. Last but not least, I should mention that uh, we are working on a Windows client, a, a GUI client. So uh, hopefully you don't have to wait too, too much for that. But uh, you know, as we get around to that, we'll release and uh, hopefully get it out to a beta group shortly. All right. Thanks, everybody.